Hello everybody, this is going to be a quick video just to show you my approach for trimming bowls. This is a larger bowl, but the same principles apply whether it's a salad bowl or a dessert bowl. Um, this one's made out of red clay and it is a little harder than I would normally like to trim. I actually like to trim where it's fairly easy to dent the clay. It means there's less stress on the tool, um, but this should work. So I've got a little bit of clay here that I'll use to secure the bowl once I've got it centered. Um, a couple of different ways to get your bowl recentered on the wheel upside down. So one is spinning the wheel slowly and using your finger as a guide. And I'm going to make it a little bit more off center so you can see. Um, you can see it probably wobbling left to right as the wheel goes around. And once per revolution, it's going to come and touch my finger. Um, and I'm gauging down a little bit, not at the very bottom where I cut off, but down maybe an inch or two. Um, and it's going to touch my finger there. And I'm going to stop it and then push it away from where it was touching my finger. And I'm going to check it again. And it's closer, but it's still just touching once per revolution. So I'm going to stop it when it gets to my finger and give it a smaller shove. And it is now rubbing for more of the circumference. Let's see. Stopping there, a little tiny, tiny push. Oops, I overdid it. I'm going to bring it back a little. That's getting pretty close. It's kind of rubbing the whole way around. So that takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's an iterative process. You keep getting closer and closer and closer until you decide it's good enough. Uh, and that works great. Uh, that's basically the, the first way that I learned. Um, and then I also like a way where if it's off center, I just sort of tap on it um, quasi randomly. Uh, and the key is for it to be kind of a sharp tap so that I don't sort of follow through. And if if you think about it, the side that's sticking out towards my hand, the more it's eccentric that way, the more likely I am to hit it. And so if I just kind of randomly tap on the, the wall of the pot, um, I'm more likely to hit the parts that need to be hit and it'll eventually get um, on center. And I'll do a separate video on that technique, but it's really handy because it gets you on center in a hurry more so than having to stop, start and stop the wheel. And if you're using a wheel, like a kick wheel, that's really a pain to stop, um, you really need to learn how to tap on center. With these nicely controlled um, electric wheels, it's less crucial. All right, so this scrap clay is also a little drier than I like, but you don't want it super wet. Um, it doesn't have to be wedged up. It's basically just something to uh, chalk your pot to the wheel and keep it from flying off. Uh, let me talk a little bit about securing it. I need four lugs to hold it down and I'm going to apply them two at a time on directly opposing sides of the pot. And I just place them next to the pot and then squish them down to the wheel. You don't want to create any kind of tendency to push the piece off, especially if you've just spent a lot of time figuring out how to get it on center. So if I put them down on opposite sides and stick them down simultaneously, the pressure balances out. We don't have any force in a, a direction there. They're just going to completely cancel. Okay, so when I trim, I do everything with one tool. I use this um, teardrop shape tool. And when I need to do fine cuts, I'm going to hit the point. And when I need to do kind of a broader point, I'll use this, this flatter section here. It is a good idea before you start, if you haven't cleaned the tool properly before you put it away, just to get any dried clay off of the tool. Much better practice to clean it before you put it away so it doesn't get, get dry and crusty in the first place. But apparently I didn't do that last time. So this is ready to go. The first thing I'm going to consider is how wide do I want the base of the pot? And the rule of thumb that works for me, for my aesthetic, is to look at the overall diameter at the rim and come into about half of that. Um, so if I were to measure it, I've actually got a tape measure here. It's hard to tell, but I'm going to say it's about 12 and a half inches or so. So half of that would be six and a quarter. So really, I don't have to bring this in, but about a quarter of an inch. I've already kind of thrown it to the proportion that I like. So I'm not going to keep cutting and cutting in. I'm just going to cut straight down in order to bring the foot diameter to six and a quarter, half of the overall diameter. So I get the wheel spinning and I'm just going to cut straight down. 
Now, why cut down? If I cut downward, I'm going to be producing a perfect circle. If I try to come in from the side, it's going to bounce me around and I'm not going to end up with a straight circle. So it's really important, I think, to start that cut from above and I've got my arms down, so I'm not gonna be waving around left and right. I'm just gonna cut straight down. And I wanna cut down until I have the height of my foot established that's gonna give me something to hold onto when I go to glaze it. A big bowl especially, if you don't have a nice foot on there, it's gonna be really a pain to hold onto it uh, and get it in and out of the glaze bucket. So at least a quarter inch, but more like three eighths of an inch so you can get a good grip on it. Gonna go ahead and cut down again where that foot meets the rest of the pot when you first cut down you're gonna end up with this funky little um, ledge and obviously that's not something you want to keep but I'm gonna check it and I definitely have enough height now for my foot now I'm gonna just sort of work on smoothing the curve between the main curve of the bowl and where the foot meets that cut that I just made so for that I'm gonna hold the tool in this orientation and I'm gonna cut from down the pot up towards the foot. I wanna rub, run the tip of the tool into the foot without cutting into it. I just wanna kind of meet the foot with the tip. And so that's a pretty quick process. Just come up and meet the foot. The foot is basically formed at this point, but it's not refined. It's just got um, kind of a vertical ledge there. And I don't really, I don't love that as the final look, but. Um, the diameter is established, the curve is re-established from the bottom of the bowl up here to where it meets the foot. Now I'm going to hollow out the interior section of the foot. Um, the only thing you really have to think about here is cutting down a similar distance on the inside of the foot as you did on the outside of the foot. Slightly less because the inside of the bowl is curving. Um, and you have to think about how much clay you're leaving to become the foot. And I like for that width to correspond somewhat to the width of the rim of the pot. Um, and I usually leave a little bit of a heavier rim on my pot, so I leave a little bit of a heavier foot. Uh, it's the part that meets the table, it meets the counter, and it needs to be a little bit durable. So don't, don't be skimpy on how much clay you leave for the foot. So I'm gonna come in and leave about 3 eighths of an inch and cut straight down until I reach a depth that's somewhat corresponding to the outside. Um, and then I just need to remove material starting in the middle and working my way out towards that cut that I made. You wanna make that establishing cut downward, holding still, I mean, obviously you're moving down, but not moving right or left, so that the thickness of the foot is consistent all the way around. If you started in the middle and just sort of stopped somewhere and left off quickly, you'd have a kind of a funky, uneven looking foot. Again, I'm going to establish that foot. You can move from the outside in. I find it's just easier on that first cut when I'm removing a, a fair amount of sort of thick trimming um, just to kind of swoop from the inside out. Um, if you're newer to trimming, definitely work outside in and take a lighter cut. So starting at the outside, working towards the middle. Now, when you see somebody trim, you're probably going to see them tapping on the bottom of their pod. kind of compare it to the side of the pot. Um, as the sound gets lower and more hollow and more resonant, that's your cue that the bottom is getting thinner. If you're trimming and all of a sudden it kind of drops a little bit, then you're going really thin and you need to lay off and quit. Uh, this has still got a little bit of thickness left to it where I have flexibility. And I'm going to sight across the foot and make sure that the center point is definitely recessed significantly, at least an eighth of an inch um, below the foot level. You don't want a bowl that's going to rock on a point. That said, this central area inside of the foot is not a flat plane. Uh, if you think about the inside of the bowl, it should be curved. And so the outside of the underside should be cur curved to match. But that's the goal anyway. Um, it just looks nicer and it means that your wall thickness is more uniform, which means less stress as things heat and cool. Now you're allowed to impart some character at this point. So I often will slow the wheel down and do one final little swoop where I, where I move the tool quickly towards the center, not too quickly, but um, 
maybe over the course of three revolutions of the wheel. And that's going to impart sort of a spiral um, into that clay at the bottom. And then I lift off when I get to the middle. And that's kind of just a nice little detail that people can appreciate when they flip your pot over. All right, that's definitely thin enough. Um, my inside of my foot and my outside of my foot are trimmed to about the same height. The last couple of things that I'm gonna do are to do with refining the foot itself. This one got wired off really nicely and I can actually see the texture in the top of this foot that was produced by a spinning wheel and a twisted wire tool, um, the kind that I make myself out of fishing line. Uh, and I really like that detail. I don't wanna trim that part of the foot. If I had done a ratty job wiring off, or if there were gouges or sharp places or whatever, then I would probably want to refine the foot on the top surface. But as it is, what I'm going to work about, worry about is the inside corner and the outside corner, and also kind of the visual impact of the outside of the foot. Um, I don't like them to be perfectly vertical. I feel like when they're perfectly vertical, they're neither here nor there. Um, I either want them to come in a little bit, which makes the pot look like it's up on its tippy toes, it's kind of elevated, or to ground the pot more by having the foot come outward and look like it's sort of um, flat-footed and more secure on the table. I tend to go for the tippy toe drama, so I'm going to trim it inward. That's going to thin out my foot a little bit where it contacts the table. And you'll notice I used a a slightly slow wheel and what that does is it produces trimming rings or trimming spirals coming up that foot and I like the way that looks and I also like the way that I have a good grip on it when I go to glaze. Now I'm happy with that I'm happy with there there's sort of a little shadow where the foot meets the curve of the bowl and I, I like that for two reasons visually it's nice and functionally the glaze has a little kind of place to hang up and catch and not just run right down the foot. The final step that's very, very important not to forget is you don't want to leave this at a knife edge. You had a flat plane where you wired off and you have a flat plane where you've um, trimmed the side and it needs to be at least maybe a 16th of an inch round over um, so that it's more resistant to getting chipped. So I'm going to just take my flat of my tool like here and cut a 45 degree bevel very lightly on the inside and the outside. And then I'm going to take just a clean dry finger and kind of round that bevel from a 45 degree chamfer, we call it in woodworking, to just a round over. And that extra little compression and that little bit of rounding over uh, will really make a huge difference in how long this foot uh, takes knocks against uh, hard countertops or other pots in the dishwasher or other pots in the sink when you're washing by hand. Um, so I really advocate that burnishing round over move. All that's left to do at this point is grab a pen um, and sign my name on the bottom. I like to sign them inside the foot. Um, if I can find a little ball stylus like this, it's great. Otherwise, I really like uh, a used ballpoint pen. If your ballpoint pen runs out of ink, throw it into your pottery toolbox and use it to sign your pots. I really don't like signing pots with a needle tool. Uh, it raises a lot of burrs and it just looks um, scratchy. So something that's got a little bit of a rounded end is nicer. So I'll go ahead and sign my name and set this one aside to dry. Then I'll have a lot of fun figuring out how to hold on to this thing and get it in a bucket since it's bigger than the bucket opening. Um, I hope that answered some questions for you about trimming. There's all kinds of details we could have gotten into um, and I might include those in another video, but um, I like this style tool. If you're looking to buy one, a Dolan 511 is a great investment. Uh, it's made of high quality steel and it'll last you, I won't say a lifetime because if you sharpen them, uh, you'll wear them out. This one is on its last legs um, and it's still working. So I'm going to kind of keep going with it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you learned some things about trimming. And the main thing is get some practice in.